The Honourable Member for Haldeman Norfolk. Madam Speaker, tonight I'm here to ask this government to answer to Canadians for the state of despair, hunger and homelessness that Canadians are experiencing. After nine years of this Liberal government that's propped up by the NDP, Canadians are struggling with hunger and homelessness like never before in this country. This country is a noble nation. We have always been a beacon of hope and opportunity for people seeking ref refuge from all around the world. Today, that national legacy is at risk of being lost. How can Canadians continue to be a land of opportunity and freedom when so many Canadians are no longer able to feed and house themselves? According to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, chronic homelessness is up 38 per cent. Madam Speaker, that is 38 per cent. The number of individuals living in unsheltered locations has increased by 88 per cent. That's almost double the number of unsheltered people since 2018. The level of suffering in this country is shocking especially considering that this government has added half a billion dollars of new annual spending to reduce homelessness, a 374 per cent increase in spending by this government. So why, if this government is spending more, is life getting harder for Canadians? Canadians are afraid of their financial future and what it will bring. We know that 76% of the mortgages that exist today will come re renewed by 2026. And Canadians are worried that their mortgage interest rates and that their payments will double or even triple because of increasing interest rates. Canadians can expect a payment shock, according to the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions. The Liberals have added $61 billion of new spending to their, uh, to their new budget, which the Governor of the Bank of Canada confirmed was not helpful in bringing down interest rates. Canadians, especially young Canadians, just want to be able to afford a home, to be able to afford shelter and basic food. How many homes has this government built with their $4.4 billion housing accelerator fund? How many have they actually built, Madam Speaker? Zero. Even worse, housing starts are down and home prices keep going up in most jurisdictions across Canada. The facts are that when this Prime Minister was first elected, he promised to expand the middle class, but in fact, it has significantly reduced. He has increased homelessness by more than a third. He has priced out middle-income Canadians from owning a home. He has allowed food bank use to jump by 50 per cent over the past three years, with over two million Canadians a month accessing the food banks. I hope that my honourable colleague can respond to the matter at hand so that Canadians can finally get a straight answer. When will this NDP Liberal government cap its inflationary spending and build the homes that Canadians need to live in dignity? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. Again, I thank the member opposite uh, for the question uh, that she has posed. And I, and I appreciate the opportunity to highlight the work that our government is doing to tackle affordability in Canada. First of all, I would like to start by welcoming the Bank of Canada's decision to lower the interest rate. It was a very significant moment today when the Bank of Canada has lowered the interest rate across the country. It is truly a great news for Canada and for, for Canadians. Um, in fact, uh, Speaker, we're the first country in the G G7 where a cut in interest rate has taken place. And that is the result of the federal government's economically responsible plan, a plan that has been working. Uh, the government has been working really hard to create the economic conditions that would make it possible for Bank of Canada 
to lower the interest rate. It hasn't happened in vacuum. It is as a result of the economic plan and the agenda that the government has been working on. And that's why we are seeing the fruit of that hard work as Canada, as I stated earlier, is the first G7 country where interest rates have been lowered. As I mentioned earlier, this is a significant moment. Speaker, on the matter of, of housing and building more homes faster, we are absolutely committed to tackling housing affordability by building more homes. Because the best way to bring down home prices is to increase supply and in to increase it quickly. The $4 billion housing accelerator fund is already cutting red tape across the country with 179 agreements with municipalities, provinces, and territories enabling the construction of over, over 750,000 new homes over the next 10 years. In fact, in budget 2024, the, that work is built on by proposing to top the fund up with $400 million to build more homes faster in more communities. Budget 2024 also proposes an additional $15 billion in new loan funding for the apartment construction loan program, bringing the program's total to over $55 billion. This investment will help build more than 30,000 additional new homes across Canada, bringing the program's total contribution to over 131,000 new homes by 2032. Speaker, to support this new housing, we're investing in the infrastructure communities need to grow, which is why the budget 2024 proposes to provide $6 billion to launch a new Canada housing infrastructure fund that will allow our communities, our municipalities to build infrastructure like sewer systems and access to electricity and natural gas in order for people to enjoy their homes. Furthermore, Budget 2024 takes action to unlock new pathways for young renters to become homeowners and to protect middle-class homeowners from rising mortgage payments. For example, Budget 2024 announces the government's intention to strengthen the Canadian Mortgage Charter to allow 30-year mortgage amortizations for first-time home buyers purchasing newly constructed homes and to help our younger generation purchase their first home faster we are proposing to increase the home buyer's plan withdrawal limit from $35,000 to $60,000. Yes, Speaker, there are a lot of measures here in place, but this is a big task to ensure the government enables building of more homes across the country in all communities, not just in large urban centers, but in smaller communities in the country as well. And it will require multiple initiatives like the ones that I have outlined for that to happen. What it will not, what will not help is mere slogans. Just to say that we will build homes, as we hear from the conservatives, as we hear from the member opposite, is not going to build a single home. These measures will. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Haldeman, Norfolk. Madam Speaker, the fact is, is that over the last nine years, we have seen this government engage in inflationary spending that has driven up interest rates, and Canadians are paying the price of this. I remind the member that 76% of Canadians who have mortgages now will have their mortgage renewed in 2026. Canadians have had enough of a government that has failed to ensure affordable housing, that has failed to ensure affordable energy bills, and that has failed to ensure affordable food. Canadians are desperate. A whole generation of Canadians have lost hope of a dream of owning a home and having even the same standard of living that their parents enjoyed. So only Conservatives are committed to reducing taxes, fixing the budget and building homes that Canadians can afford. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Again, thank, thank you, Speaker. And I didn't hear any concrete solution from the member opposite, but yet again, just a slogan. And I can assure you, a slogan is not going to help improve the lives of Canadians. What the member opposite, when, when she refers to inflationary spending, what she's talking about is that somehow the government of Canada, during the, during the pandemic, which was the worst crisis in our lifetime, that government of Canada should have not spent the money to help Canadians, to help Canadian businesses. That's the spending she's arguing against. That's the spending she's blaming for the challenges that we are facing in terms of increase in inflation, increase in interest rates. That is the aftermath 
of coming out of a pandemic. But the government had no choice but to ensure that we protect Canadians, that we make sure that they have enough money to put food at the table and businesses survive. And that's what we did. And that's why our economy is growing. And we are able to see that impact of that growth.